Well, welcome back everyone to the City Conservation Center. Hope you guys are all having a wonderful day so far. Today we are getting started with our beautiful red panda habitat. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this one. In case if you guys are new here, welcome to the City Conservation Center. This is my newest project in Planet Zoo. It concerns all different types of endangered, critically endangered, or any other animals of that matter for that fact. I guess um, anything that has really suffered from endangered populations in the past anything that's really important to conservation all that kind of jazz so welcome hope you guys enjoy your stay so today i really want to make a beautiful red panda habitat right off of our siberian station area so we just finished the himalayan brown bear habitat before and i really wanted to lead this into the panda area so in case you guys are unaware for my plans for the zoo even i'm kind of unaware half the times uh i do want to have a large section for the pandas so both the red pandas and the giant pandas both having them in kind of like the same area i feel like it'd be a really cute idea but as you can see right here we're only working on the red pandas right now and we kind of nailed down this kind of theme I guess you could kind of say. Uh, I really do like the use of like the wood beams over here. I think it makes a really wonderful transition from our Siberian section over to a lot more cleaner, a lot more modern panda section. I think the uh, kind of like East Asian classic orient kind of style is very much said and done with. Uh, I'm not really a big fan of that for panda areas. It just feels so overdone, I guess. Uh, so I really wanted to make a lot more of a modern one, one that's a little bit paying homage to that, so you can kind of see we're kind of trying that with the roofs, kind of having that, like, uh, I guess kind of like curved pagoda kind of feel, I'm not really sure. You guys, I'm not silverette, I really don't know my architecture terms all that well, but you can kind of see how the inspiration kind of stems from over there but we're not really making it all on the nose we're really just trying to put our own spin on it and you can see i'm kind of doing a custom roof over here very much online with the rest of the conservation center and i'm trying to get that all to look good so i could duplicate it on the other side so making our way over here i also did want to extend it off a little bit just so that we have a little bit more shade in here so i Du duplicate wow sorry i duplicate another section over there just to make sure it feels a lot better make sure it flows a lot better as well and you can see i've kind of made these terraces and that's because i kind of had this idea planned before this entire habitat is very much based off of national zoo's red panda habitat very lightly uh obviously it's not a one-to-one -one, but i did want to recreate some of the vibes in there so you are looking up like this beautiful hillside and i really wanted to kind of recreate that so that's exactly what we do over here and i throw the red pandas in and i start to get to work on the rock work this is probably one of my favorite processes to do in terms of habitat design it's really kind of indicating where the habitat flows and my process usually concerns making terrain first then moving into rocks then moving into smaller rocks and faux rocks for details and then from there adding in all the foliage so i kind of make these bare outlines it's very much like sketching uh it's kind of like sketching like you know a character or something like that you gotta figure out where like the kind of crevices and all like where the habitat moves and stuff makes sense and then I start to continue that throughout the rest of the habitat. And you can already see that it is a little bit big. Uh, that's one of my tricks for building. Usually I build a little bit bigger than I want to at first. And then after I do build around that size, uh, I start to shrink it with all the rocks, all the terrain, all the plants and stuff like that until I get that actual navigational area to be as small as I really want it to be. And I think that's a really wonderful skill to kind of hone. I think it works extremely well in this case, especially with an animal as small as the red panda. You don't want to overstate its welcome. You got to make sure that it's visible from like all sides of the habitat. And I apologize if you hear some jingling in the background. My dog is coming over to join me. Hello. Uh, but you can see over here, I felt like the habitat was still a little bit too big. All my buddies were saying it was a little too big. So I was like, all right, we got to kind of cancel down some of this size over here. And I figured one awesome 
awesome way was to get a moat in here. Uh, the National Zoo actually has a really interesting red panda habitat where you can actually touch them. Uh, you're not supposed to. You're really not supposed to. I really wouldn't suggest you guys do that. But the fence is low enough to the point where if they're coming up to you, uh, you probably might be able to get a chance to touch them. So I wanted to make sure that we do prevent that a little bit more by making a little bit of a rocky moat so they really wouldn't in real life uh, come up to you. So what I also do over here is make the keeper pathway. So I am made, I made these like custom tiles, yada yada, and I'm rotating them with each placement just so it creates a nice little pattern. I think it turned out really good in the end. And I go through with my little terrain brush and I make it feel like it's been trodden down a little bit more. Uh, making my way through the habitat as well, here's where we start to get a little bit more funky. Getting, going in with all of my grasses, going in with my periwinkle, going in with my Yorkshire frog. Yorkshire frog? Yeah, that's a new amphibian that they're gonna give us. No, um, going in with the Yorkshire fog grass, it's so beautiful in the end of it. Uh, and we kind of just build our habitat up from there. And this is another great way to kind of cut down on habitat space even more, is using the bracken and stuff like that. It's a really great way to say, no, we don't want any animals going over here. So it's a really great way to kind of mess, like, I don't really know what you would call that, kind of mask up those areas. And since red pandas are arboreal most of the time, uh, we will be building climbing cranes and stuff like that in the end, just to make sure that they don't really kind of go anywhere where they're not supposed to, and make sure that they don't really use much of the land area as possible. I also use the saltwort bushes, I forgot about them, and I also threw them back in the Himalayan brown bear habitat, just because I really wanted to keep a consistent theme with my foliage, and I felt like if we skipped a habitat with that, it really wouldn't be the best. So making our way throughout here, we also have to add some bamboo as well, of course, because we are making a red panda habitat, and any red panda habitat would not be a red panda habitat without some red panda habitat bamboo. Uh, adding some of that through there, and we also kind of make this area feel a little bit more uh, overgrown. So I add some more periwinkle grass up there to the top, and I add some saltwort bushes. Nothing really too crazy, and I also add these fences over here from the Siberian area, a little bit of our little camped area. These guys are on my workshop, by the way. Uh, you guys can just look up leaf productions on the workshop or something like that, or leaf, I forget. Uh, but you should be able to get those. I forget what I actually call them, but they're, I think it's like wooden crosshatch fence or something. But they're made using the sapling. The, uh, I forget which sapling it is. I think it's a Brazil nut. It's such a wonderful piece over there. I really did like that. So we make our way throughout here as well, and we start to indicate where we want our little platforms to be by placing down the logs first. Uh, so the cladding, or whatever you call it, uh, we have that be indicated first and foremost, and then we start to kind of manipulate the habitat a little bit to make it work for us, and then we start to add it to all the other pieces. And I really do love how well it came out. It's just such a nice, clean climbing frame. I haven't really done anything like this before. I usually opt for blueprints, but this was the first time I've done, like, a fully custom one which is really fun even though I know I just did one for the lemurs uh, but still it was super fun to do and I actually use something very innovative over here I actually use the India telephone poles uh, I kind of have them be a little bit too tall at first for like the rest of these but I do fix that later down the line either before the cinematics or after it I genuinely forget but we have them kind of connect to each other so they can access each and every climbing frame and each and every platform i felt like that'd be pretty good to have what i regret not doing is um adding a little bit of shaded area for these guys because they can overheat uh they can huffer huffer seat stroke yeah that's great they can suffer heat stroke so i gotta make sure that we don't really have that possibility coming in here so i do gotta cover up some of these at least but we'll do that relatively soon. Uh, and I also add one up here just because I felt like we needed a little bit more of a higher altitude one. So we have one right over there, and I start to do some other areas for the guests as well. So I kind of continue the pathing over here. I do this all kind of implied. Uh, so I have a little picnic area over here for the guests to kind of sit at. So I kind of cover it all up with mulch. You can see me going ham with the pieces over here. I just select them all, and then I start to duplicate them all over each other. It feels like... It really does work pretty well. Um, and I also add the decals over here too, just to help it break up the monotony of the little um, mulch pieces a lot more. 
have it feel like there's some lighter areas, have it feel like some darker areas, yada yada yada. And I also go over here and do some shade structures as well. I want it to be nice white and red, I feel like that would be really nice to have. And I also continue some signage over here, those signs are by Lion. Uh, he is an incredible builder on the workshop and I really do suggest you guys check those pieces out because they really do help to settle a build and make it look 10 times better. I also come through here and I also add a little bit more decorations to our little viewing area right there. And that is about it for this video, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy the cinematics. The red pandas in this are wicked cute, so be sure to stay around for them. Look at them go. Look at them fighting in the back. It's so cute. But thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are always the best. I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys are enjoying the Sydney Conservation Center. It's slowly becoming one of my favorite projects because of how much diversity we have in here. And it's just such a really awesome place to kind of come in here and flex my building skills. Thank you guys so much for watching. Can't wait to see you all in the next video. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now.